Morning guys, welcome to the workshop. It's a nice, bright, crisp, frosty morning this morning, but the forecast is saying that it's gonna be dry. So although it's very cold, it's time to get the brakes sorted out on the Sprinter before we head off on our tour. Because it's been sitting in the garden for quite a while, the brakes have actually gone really rusty. Uh, there's quite a bit of meat on the pads and they probably would be okay, but I know those discs will fail the MOT. So what I've done is I've bought a full set of discs and pads for all four wheels. And in today's video, what we're gonna do is gonna be swapping those out and I'll show you how to do that. It's a fairly simple process, but if you've never done brakes before, or you're a little bit unsure, I'd always suggest that you get a professional to do them. First of all, let's have a look at the tools that we're gonna need. What I've got on the bench are the tools that we're gonna to need to do these brakes. Let me just quickly run through them. I've got the wheel brace that come with the van. Fortunately, this is an extending one, so we'll be able to get plenty of leverage to undo the wheel nuts. I've got a long socket bar because the rear brakes are held on with two types of bolts. One's a 13 mil bolt that holds the cylinder on and then there's a 21 mil bolt that holds the main carrier onto the hub. On the fronts, they'll be slightly different. I know on the Sprinter, the cylinder's held on with a 6 mil Allen key and on a lot of different vehicles, the brake calipers are held on with Allen keys and not bolts. So you may need a selection of sockets or Allen wrenches. This is a little spreader tool and what this is for is to push the pistons back into the calipers so that we can get the new brake pads in. You can use one of these little tools or you can use a large pipe wrench or even a G clamp to push those cylinders back. We've got some copper grease just to put on the back of the new pads just so they slide nicely. Just a normal screwdriver just for prising off the hub cap and for other bits and pieces wire brush to clean the old brakes up because they will be covered in rust and a torch to see under that wheel arch because it's going to be dark there. Before we start work on changing the discs and pads you need to locate the brake fluid reservoir. It will be under the bonnet and it will be directly in front of the driver's seat because the brake pedal is connected to this master cylinder. It's a hydraulic system works on brake fluid. You've got a master cylinder here that pushes brake fluid through these little pipes out to each of the wheels and then there's a slave cylinder on each of the brake calipers. Before we start changing the brakes you just need to check the level of the brake fluid because as we push the slave cylinders back on the calipers it's going to put fluid back into this reservoir. Now whoever did the brakes before on this vehicle this reservoir is pretty much full which it shouldn't be. There should be a little bit of room for expansion and contraction. The max fill mark is on the side here and it should never be more than that. So obviously I've got to take quite a bit of fluid out of this reservoir before we even start. And then what I'll do is I'll take quite a bit out and then once we've finished the brakes and we're pumping them up, I can always top up with some fresh brake fluid afterwards. Before we start doing the brakes, what I've done is I've put the vehicle in neutral. I've taken the handbrake off and I've put a chock underneath the front wheel to stop it rolling forward when we jack it up. We need the handbrake release particularly because there's drum brakes on these rears and that is operated by the handbrake so this wheel won't turn if the handbrake's on. First thing you want to do is just crack these nuts while the wheel's still on the ground and then that will stop it rolling. Once you just crack them then we'll jack it up and then we'll undo them all together. I've jacked up the van and then I've lowered it down onto an axle stand and I've got a second axle stand there just as a backup because you don't want to leave the vehicle on your jack while you're working on it or underneath it because the jack could easily give away and then you'd be in a world of trouble. There you can see what I was saying about the condition of these discs. I mean, it really doesn't take long for these mild steel discs to get rusty. You can get surface rust on them within a matter of a couple of days. But I know these are quite heavily pitted. They won't pass an MOT, so we've got brand new ones to replace these. First thing we've got to do is get this caliper off. I'm going to spray the bolts that hold it on at the back with some WD-40, because I know they'll be really tough to get off, and leave that just to soak in a little while, and then we'll try it with a nice big pry bar. 
Probably not the best of camera angles underneath the wheel arch here, but I just want to show you what we've got here. There's a little brake pad sensor here. You get new ones in with the new brake pads. So this just unplugs. It's attached to the brake pad, but that'll come out with the old brake pad. And then you've got two bolts, one here, one here. They hold the slave cylinder onto the caliper. And then you've got two larger bolts behind there. There's a 21 mil bolt at the top and a 21 mil bolt at the bottom. And that holds the whole caliper onto the hub. So we'll take these two off first, release the cylinder, and then we can take the pads out. And then we'll take these large ones off later. That will release the caliper and then we can take the disc off. I've already put plenty of WD-40 on these. Some people do suggest giving them a little tap just to maybe loosen up the threads. Not sure if that works, but we'll give it a go. Now these ones should be pretty good. Yeah, see that's, that was quite easy. I'm not expecting the 21 mil bolts to be that easy. They are notoriously hard. If you're just changing pads, you would only need to undo these. In fact, you only need to undo the bottom one. Just slacken the top one and you can pull the slave cylinder up hinged on this top bracket here. So if you're just doing pads, just undo this one and loosen this one. But because we're changing the discs, we've got to take the whole of this carrier off the hub. Well, that was surprisingly easy. Maybe the little hammer trick did the job. While the caliper's still on here, if you put a screwdriver in between the back of the disc and the pad, I'm changing the disc so I'm not worried about damaging it. Shove a screwdriver in the back of the disc here and just push that slave cylinder back in. There's a piston in there and this will just help it to retract. We have got a proper tool to do this when we take them out, but just to give you enough of a gap so there's a bit of play there so you can easily get them off. And then the pads just pull out. See, there's a fair bit of meat on those pads, but we're gonna change everything anyway. Just rest the slave cylinder up on top of the suspension there while we're working to get this carrier off. We'll try that old trick again, I suppose. Not sure that that does anything. There we go, that wasn't too bad. A few shocks with a hammer is the same as tapping the end of the nuts. It just sends a shock wave through there and breaks that rust. Too bad, was it? We'll give these a good clean up with some brake cleaner. Get all the old brake dust off of them before we put them all back together. Give them a good wire brush. Go, that's the old carrier off. Now the disc is held onto the hub with this one little screw here which is a torque head screw. I squirted that with WD-40 earlier but what you will find is that the disc tends to rust onto the hub around here so it doesn't hurt to have a squirt of WD-40 around this joint here and then don't be afraid to give this a few taps with your hammer as well just to release it 
and then we'll undo that screw hopefully that'll just pop off That's the little grub screw. There we go. And then in there, what you'll see inside there, these are the pads for the drum brakes. Because as well as this being a disc brake, this is also the parking brake on the handbrake. And those inner pads run around the inside of the disc. I've just got some brake cleaner. This stuff evaporates quite quickly, but just release the old brake dust. And then just give them a little bit of a wire wall. Wire brush even. What we also need to do is just get in here with a wire brush and just clean this caliper, get off a lot of this loose rust before we put the new pads back in. What you do need to do with these new discs, these have got a very thin film of oil on here to stop them going rusty, obviously when they're in the packaging. So you just need to clean that off with this brake cleaner. You just want to make sure that they have got that oil removed before you put them on. Do both sides. Just whatever protective coating they put on them when they were in the factory. Make sure that comes off. Seems to be plenty of material on these handbrake pads. I'm not going to do anything with those. It was adjusted correctly before I took it off, so it doesn't need adjusting before I put this new disc on. Just made sure that the little grub screw hole is at the top so I can locate it. And then put the disc on. A little bit of a wiggle, that's it line it up with that little grub screw and then just reinsert that torque screw just to secure the disc so these are the new pads you can see they come with the new wear sensor already fitted and in this kit we also get a new set of clips to hold the pads onto the caliper. So we can take these old clips off, they just simply pull off. And then before we put the new clips on we'll give this a really good clean up with a wire brush. A lot of brake calipers don't have those little metal clips. So you need to make sure that these guides are really nice and clean and then put a little bit of copper slip on these and then that will just make them slide a bit easier and it will stop them squeaking. This is the slave cylinder on these rear brakes and this is the piston part. When you push your pedal down, this piston comes out and applies pressure on the brake pads. What we did earlier when we stuck the screwdriver in and pushed that pad back is we pushed this piston back into its housing. If it doesn't go all the way back in, it'll be difficult to get the new pads in because the new pads are a little bit thicker. So what you can do is you can get a little tool like this or you can simply use maybe a big wrench or even a G-clamp across here and just push that piston back in gently 
just watch the level of the brake fluid in your little reservoir underneath the bonnet because as you're pushing this cylinder back that brake fluid is being forced back up the brake lines and into that top up reservoir so just make sure that doesn't overflow at the front while you're doing this if the level is getting a bit high in the front there you can obviously just remove a bit of liquid down to your max level and that's just a case of reversing the process we'll get this pad carrier on first this bolts to the hub with those two big 21 mil bolts like most bolts on your vehicle they do have a recommended torque rating that you should tighten them up to I'm afraid I don't have a torque wrench I'm just going to apply plenty of pressure but ideally you should have a torque wrench look up in your manual what they should be and tighten them to the correct setting they want to be nice and tight I think there's a couple of schools of thought but I'm old school I still like to put a tiny little bit of this copper grease on the back of my brake pads and on these little lugs. I only need a tiny bit because you don't want it to get onto the actual face of the brakes. But just to lubricate them just a, just a little bit. So we'll just put a little smear on the backs and a little smear on these lugs. Not a lot. Just before we put them in. These are a little bit springy, these clips, so push the bottom one in and then you can push the top one in. Let's put the wear sensor on the inside. I'm not sure whether it matters, but that's where it was when we took them off. So we'll put it back where it was before. That's the new pads in place and all we need to do now is just put the cylinder back on the outside. Make sure that your brake lines and that are not twisted. Pop the little sensor through and then with that piston held in the back position they should go on there quite easily. That's it. And then we'll just pop them last two bolts back in and then we can clip the sensor back in. sensor back in it's only switch contacts so unless the plug is a specific way around it's only making those two contacts so the polarity shouldn't make any difference with these wheel studs it's worth just getting a wire brush and just giving those threads a bit of a clean out it will make them go in easier and it'll also make them come out easier next time you need to change your wheel get rid of all that road dirt and grease there you go that'll go in a lot easier now And what you want to do when you're tightening these wheel nuts up 
is to do them in opposites. So if you tighten one and tighten the one opposite and it'll pull the wheel in square to the hub. Tighten one, tighten the one opposite. They've got cone shaped pieces on the back of the nuts. They'll pull in square, but it's always better just to do one nut and then do the opposite nut. And then get them as snug as you can while the wheel's up in the air. That'll pull it in nice and square and then we'll drop it down off the jack and do the last bit with the wheel on the ground. That's all the nuts tightened up evenly. Just put the hub cap back on. And there we go. New discs and new pads. What you'll find when you've finished your brakes, because we push those slave cylinders back into the housings, they've got quite a way to travel to come back onto the new pads. So you'll find that your brake pedal will probably drop right to the floor initially and you'll need to pump it three or four times just to build that brake pressure back up and bring those slave cylinders back out in contact with the pads. So don't be alarmed if it drops to the floor, just pump it three or four times, you'll feel that pressure come back and then you'll have a nice firm pedal like this is now. And then what we need to do then is just check the fluid levels in the little top up bottle. So there we go guys, that's new brake discs and pads all round on our Sprinter. We've added quite a considerable bit of weight to our van, so having really good brakes is definitely going to be a bonus. It is quite a simple thing to do, so you don't have to resort to using garages that charge you extortionate prices to get them done, you can do it yourself. But if you're not confident, then always seek out a professional to do it for you. If you found this video useful, please do give me a thumbs up please share the videos on social media and if you've got any questions please leave me a comment in the comment section below. And as it's nearing Christmas, if you're still struggling to find that perfect present, what better way to say that you care than to give one of my t-shirts. Just simply click on this red bubble link at the top of this video. Thanks very much for all your support, I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers!